Fruta, Colorado, on our way to Mountain Primal Meat Company Ranch. Over there in, uh, it's close to Durango and Aspen. So right now I am literally just taking a nice little picture to document our journey as we head out. So I think we've got about another two and a half hours to go and then uh, we'll be getting a whole tour of the ranch. And this trip is just me, Mark, and Jason, uh, we left the family at home, and now we're just making a little voyage on her. Oh, hello, wife. Hey, baby. Mark, how you doing? Good, good. You ready to go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get out of here. Sure. Fire department uh, earlier in the summer. They were running uh, an event for the uh, honor flag, U.S. honor flag coming through. Mm -hmm. So they got to fly above their station. And a couple of their firefighters are actually chefs as well, so they, they smoked a bunch of meat. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, pretty pretty damn custom. Just a bit. <laughs> You're doing it right. Yeah, I mean you can split and put two whole hogs in there if you want. Just as long as they're not too big. Your jars <laughs> tend to get too big. <laughs> <laughs> cattle up that valley right there. We had a bunch of cattle up there when this fire was happening. And we were worried that the embers were gonna like fly over to this side of the range yeah, and start yeah. that whole thing on fire. <laughs> it's original state, or as original as it was 100 years ago. The anyway. place across the road, well, we were originally gonna build our house right here in this field. And uh, as we were coming up with the design for the house and all that, we started learning how to irrigate and cut hay and bale hay and put it in the barn and then that winter I, my wife and I did 4,000 bales of hay by ourselves <laughs> that first summer. Oh, hey. And so uh, the round ones there? No, we, like had, we only had the little square baler. So if you can imagine, all this hay came off of these, these fields right here. So the first summer we only had the little square baler like you feed the horses. Yeah. So think of this field full of those little square bales. We picked every one of those. Yeah up my hand and put them in that barn right back there. Six, just shy of 6,700 feet. So the winters, they, they can get pretty harsh then. Yeah. So I got to the point where I could feed out, like I used to have the kids time me. You know, I'd come here before school and make the kids like help me out. I'm like, all right, somebody time me. I'm gonna see how fast I can put out 16 tails. <laughs> and I'd be carrying them like two at a time and throwing them in the feed bunk and the cows would be going crazy. And, it was a lot of fun. So that was our first entire winter, and then once we got through that, I was I was like hooked. I was like, yeah, we got to do this like forever. That's awesome. Yeah. So then I kicked that guy out of here, got his cattle back on the roping circuits, and then we bought our first 24 Highlanders that uh, summer. 
and then we so that was a dispersal herd we got from Idaho and then there's some other lady that had like 30 head that was get, going through a divorce so we were able to snatch her cattle up real cheap oh nice and we went out there and we actually bought our livestock trailer on the way out to that place to pick up those cattle came back with a full load that then we got another load from Durango Colorado we just kept like buying them up until we had enough to uh to put a good breeding group together and start cattle so, Check it out, yeah. man. You guys can all take yeah. a look. We'll just, uh, we'll take it. We'll take it back with oh, us. This is, this is so tough. It's so rough. <laughs> yeah, oh, life at the ranch is there. very okay, rough. I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do. I mean, I, I have the, uh, the Aspen Times right here. I've got, ooh, that was a lucky strike. Yeah, I just might, uh, I just might smoke. You know, why not? It's there. And whiskeys. It's okay, wife's spa. They've got me well taken care of. Oh, hell, man. You guys thought of everything. Hey, you this is the coolest airstream I've ever been in. Yeah, that's it's beautiful. That thing's awesome. Got that. Look at this bad beast. You're good. <laughs> I don't want to get my ass all wet. <laughs> get him. Hold on. All the way back. Well, it's go time. Where's my reverse camera? God damn it. <laughs> She's super inquisitive. This one should come over here and be like a couple feet away. These calves are doing really good. So we got four more to drop Do in it. this group. Oh, nice. That's why we just got them in here so we can yeah, keep so track them a little easier. So when they're here, then you're ready for them. Yeah. Help assist them. Looks like we need some feed, boys. So right in here, you can see that we have two uh, no. baby Run. cattle in here and then uh, there's four females who have yet to have their babies in here which is why they have them cloaked so they can keep track of them and assist them in the birth in case they have to give them. Totally right. Totally right. <laughs> He's a pro. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm pretty much a second hand ranch hand right now. When he gets kicked out he can come and work here. Yeah. <laughs> when my social media gets shut down I'm coming to be a ranch hand wife spot. Hope you get ready for that alright. So the rest of the cattle are up on yonder, just scattered various throughout this vast land of vegetation, and wildlife. We're about to go see if there's some coyotes, you know. Western perfection. Stocking them. So uh, in the meantime, I'm just getting educated on the stock that we have right now. And in case anything happens while I'm here, I know what to do and I can do my part. Right? That makes sense. Mark's got it. Hey, what does yonder mean? <laughs> Yonder is a term us cattle hand like to use when we like to like specificize on a certain location like yonder. Boom. <laughs> That's it. Like Austin Powers over here. 
Hey, mama. Come here, baby. See how wide she is? You can just see the baby's like on this side of her body. If you like fire, she's ready to go like any day. What we do, we come out here and we check to see if their water's broken. You can usually see some of the bag hanging out. A little, looks like a little uh, water balloon hanging out of their ass. And from that point, we usually give them like a certain period of time, keep watching them. And then if the first thing you see is a couple of hooks sticking out like this. And if that happens, then we're good to go. If it looks, if it starts to present any other way, then there's trouble. Yeah. You gotta get in there and intervene, but we usually have pretty good luck. The Highland breed is known for very easy calving. They're really good mamas, they're nice and gentle. And they need very little help during calving season. Although that one with the downturn horn, like three babies ago, I had to pull her calf out. So she was so ready to go at that point. She was just out in the field. And we ninjaed up on her, and she's in so much pain at that point, ready to have that baby out. You literally, they don't run from you at that point. They, they almost act like they want help. And you get up on them, and you just get nice and quiet, and talk real nice and low to them, and just get in there, and you just pull it out. And that, that baby's good to go. <clears throat> and then you just watch and make sure they're latched up nice, and going to the bathroom all the time. And getting latched up good, eating and drinking and jumping around. If they're not jumping around as calves, you know there's a problem. They're not kind of dancing and prancing around a little bit. You want to see them acting happy. Dude. So that those Spider. two trees fell about the same time, one year apart in the same place. That's the craziest crazy. thing ever. I was like, wait a second. I come driving out there about a year later. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like just another tree in the same spot. Same thing. This is the bear one. That's the bear fence right there. See it? Oh yeah. That guy's right, going to right there. Fence. Bear fence. That's a bear fence. What is this right here, John? That's the bear fence. So you got a bear breaking through. See, see the hole in the fence? Yep. You pull bear hair off that okay, black bear. Big old black bear is living in these woods right here. I'm gonna go in there and try to shake them out. See how rookie you are. You wishing that you could have nothing to hide, but if wishing How you doing? Are we gonna find us a bear? Somewhere. Don't shoot your dick off. <laughs> 
Yep. So what happened to her? She died. Bad winter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a bad death. These things happen on the ranch. You have casualties. Well. Actually, what happened? See that big piece rock? Yeah. That rolled down the mountain and hit her in the head. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> What's the luck? You got to be waiting for something like that, like. Oh, there's a huge rock coming for me. It's still coming. Doosh! Probably good that she's not around anymore. No way. How long ago was that? I'm just teasing. I was like, holy oh. I'm the luckiest motherfucker ever. Because you're sitting in front? For you. you know that little uh, late chain link that you screw up? That thing was gone, and I found it in the weeds. It shouldn't have happened. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the fact that look, I'm not having to do the gate. You know you behind me? Got like the crooked jaw. So cool, <laughs> She's got so much character. They're like, hey, show out of my hay pile. So yesterday, me and Trip came and checked these cattle. Yeah. One of these mamas had a piece of twine wrapped around her ear, or wrapped around her horn, and under her throat, and wrapped around the underhorn, and like 20 feet hanging off her back. So we had to drive her all the way back to the corral. We had to pin her between two gates and cut that thing off. She was freaking out. She was about choking out. That's why we check them every day, because one, one day a couple years back, one had a little piece of barbed wire on her foot. It was getting all infected and stuff. We had to bring her in, get her all cleaned up. 
You just gotta take care of them, that's all. So, so what used to be here? Oh, well, you know, just some old ranching. Yeah. Wind blew it down. Five minutes from here, there's all this like civilization right on the edge of the Yeah, so we're trying to push it back. We're just trying to take, take keep, something we're back. We're trying to keep it wild. Yeah, you know? Maybe. Just trying to keep it wild, keep it the way it's supposed to be. It's super hard because you got all these people who want it, want a little piece of it, you know, every single day. Captain's log. We're day two at the ranch. Don't forget to bring those luckies. We're gonna head to the top of the mountain where they uh, take the cattle and they take them up to pasture and feed them certain times of the year. And uh, we're gonna go up there, check it out, also check out the view and just get a big overall feel of everywhere they cover. It's part of the ranch life. I wish my grandpa still had our ranch because he raised sheep, not really cattle. But I feel like ranching is kind of deep down in my bones. So I'm loving every minute of this. different groups will hang out with different groups so getting them to herd up at the end of the summer is a little bit of a trick <laughs> but you just like ah oh, we're missing two yeah we had three the summer just came back down <laughs> the day And they'd, they'd drop fire retardant on, like, they'd strike a line, you know, the plane mm -hmm. would come in and drop a line of fire retardant. And the night of the 4th of July, when that thing was all burning, they, they saved that entire neighborhood. You can see the fire was all around that neighborhood, and they saved it somehow. Hit the ground A little off kilter Just left the center Vaughn, what was going on right there, man? We are moving on. Big old, see some environmentalists cut a tree down to block our motorized vehicles from crossing on this path. Just a little out around The day will come when I This here, this right here, that's alfalfa. And them ducks, here they come. Here? Yeah. <laughs> there they are. They're low. A bunch of them. Nice little raft. Mallards. Yeah, this is alfalfa. What you need. As long as there's a call that you need
all the, these, these sides here were born last spring. And then, that guy was born last spring. There's a handful in here that are a little bigger because they were born last fall. So they're about a year old already. And they're probably pushing 7,800 pounds already. Yeah. There's a handful of those guys that are still in here. Kind of like we're having these fall calvers here. We had about the same size group last year. The ranch is beautiful. I absolutely love it here. I can see how you get sucked into it real quick and get addicted. There's always something going on. Always something needs to be done. And there's always something to be proud of. It's great. It's great for people that like to be busy. Yeah. It's never a dull moment, ever. grass-fed uh, custom diet that we came up with for these girls so they still hit the grass-fed mark but it gives them a little bit more protein a little bit more sugars so especially going into the winter so they're in an optimal health state as it gets cold because they're all pregnant right now so their bodies are asking a lot of them they're all pregnant and they're all still nursing last year's calves so when we get into weaning season in November, we wean uh, November 1st through the 15th. And just getting the, uh, getting the calves weaned off of these mamas will allow the mamas to obtain optimal health status going into the winter along with some of our, with our supplements, our all natural supplements. So, they're, so you really set them apart from other cattlemen just because of their, their diet? Yeah, for sure. They get, uh, we test all the hay that we grow here and we make sure that the fields are putting out what it needs to put out to support them dietarily. And we have, we have a, our nutritionist comes out and helps coach us through all this stuff and gives us little tips on things that we can do to improve their diet. She comes and takes a look at the animal's health and it's just a good opportunity. It's just little details that we that we do above and beyond what a lot of other 
um, beef operations do makes us a little special. And can you tell us about the, your breed of cattle, the American Highland? Yeah, the American Highland cattle originated in Scotland, of course. I mean, most people recognize this breed from over that way on the island. Um, and one of the first registered cattle breeds in the United States goes back several hundred years. And uh, now that they're here, the breed is identified as American Highland cattle. And they're all, all these animals are registered. They're registered through the American Highland Cattle Association. They all have pedigree papers. Um, we can trace their lineage back several generations. So that way we know if we have some mamas that are performing really well, we can trace back their lineage and try to keep some of that lineage in our herd. And then it, it helps us when we're obtaining new bulls for breeding. We make sure there's no inbreeding or crossbreeding with other breeds. It's 100% authentic through all of our documentation with the American Highland Cattle Association. So females have horns, right? The females and the males have horns. They are not pulled cattle. Pulled cattle do not have horns. All of our animals are very well armed and they start growing their horns the second they're born and the little nub starts sticking out about this time um, in November. Both on the females the, the and males. The spring calves from last year, you can start to see the nubs coming out. So ranchers, yep. they, they typically love to have cattle that have no horns. Yes, it makes it easier. Um, it's definitely safer to have cattle with no horns, safer for the animals themselves and also for the hands that are working the livestock. Uh, we have chosen this breed because we think it's important for the herd to be armed. You know, just like Americans, we preferred an armed populace and we feel that way about our cattle as well. We go into this herd and, and go into the animal handling side of dealing with this type of livestock with a much higher degree of respect. So you gotta go a little slower, you gotta be a little bit more careful and you gotta know always that they could have the upper hand on you at any point, so. And then that means you also can't put as many into a truck yeah. and that type of thing if they don't have. That's correct. The, the trailering aspect of moving these animals to slaughter, to taking them to summer pasture, all that has to happen a little bit more slowly because you can't crowd them in, in the trailers, which is good for pulled and unpulled cattle alike. But typically the cattle with no horns, they get a little little too populated in the trailers if you know what I mean so we try to spread the spread the loads out a little bit further and keep them not so tight in there so they're not so hurting each other would you say they their bone structure is a little bit bigger is their fur thicker is there any other bigger differences between these cattle yeah that the Highland breed does really well here in Colorado we're right here at our ranch we're at about 6700 feet in elevation so they do extremely well in the cold you know six months out of the year it's pretty cold here so they they have two layers of fur the outer layer is basically like their rain jacket and then the layer underneath that acts as like the down jacket basically mm -hmm. so they have very good protection from the cold from the rain um, when they're when their outer layer gets wet the inner layer is still nice and dry and then they just need a little extra feed to help dry their bodies off when it snows you didn't force them to be fenced right now they just came in here right? no this is their pen they know that this is their home but they have the ability right now to leave this paddock and go out all throughout this entire pasture here you know there's several hundred acres here that they can wander right now and they feel the wind coming in they felt the rain so they kind of come back to civilization a little bit they know they're going to be safe here and they're they're happy here they feel very comfortable very at home so another unique aspect of the American Highland cattle breed, as far as beef is concerned, is one of the reasons that we selected this breed uh, to raise as beef is we feel that it's a higher quality meat and the beef itself has more protein, more iron content, and less cholesterol per gram than commercial beef. So it's a healthy, very healthy cut of meat you eat this meat you feel energized you don't feel full you feel like you could take on the world it's you don't like you don't feel sluggish and like no. oh i need to pass out for a minute this one no. kind of makes you, you you feel really good it's uh 
it's a high quality energy meal um, and it just it makes you feel incredible when you eat it and you guys still do this like the old cowboy way where you get on horses yeah and like we, once a year it's called turnout so turnout. we'll take all the animals that, that are going to go up up on top of the mountain and we run them up that cut right there on horseback it takes an entire day and everybody's pretty tired by the time they get up there but they got uh, fresh mountain air, got great sunshine, nice breeze, very few insects, tons and tons of mountain grasses to eat, and fresh snow water runoff. They drink also.